What's going on with my cheeks? Whew. Must be warm in here. Hi everyone, it's me, Julia, back again with another video. Today we're going to talk about something that I've been pondering for the last week or so. And if you've been watching me for a long time, you know traditionally I have a really hard time paying like high prices for cosmetics. Nothing is ever going to make, in my opinion, a lipstick worth $50. I mean, even if like you open the tube and little fat cherubs fly out and kiss the color on your lips, still not gonna be worth 50 bucks, in my opinion. However, I have noticed there are certain things that are worth spending a little bit more money on. So I thought I would pull together my five top like products, like not necessarily like items, like individual items, but categories of um, products that I have found throughout the years um, that are worth spending a little bit more money on and things that you don't need to go to the department store for and as a matter of fact you're probably better off going to the drugstore so I thought that's what I would do so I'm going to talk about my top five and I feel very well equipped to talk about this topic because as I said I'm 45 I've been buying makeup for a very long time and as I'm trying to only focus on the products that I really love these days instead of just accumulating a lot of stuff I'm able to see what products work what products don't and you know where the best place is to buy those things so let's jump in number one the first thing I think is definitely worth spending a little bit more money on is concealer my Two favorite concealers are the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Concealer and the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. So I just, I really think that department store concealers are worth the money that they charge for them because I just find the coverage is better on them than drugstore concealers. I find they have much better color correcting options than the drugstore does. I just find that they're a, a good place to spend your money on and you know, it's really all about covering what you want to cover without looking too heavy and cakey or you know too dry and stuff like that and I think you get that more with um, department store concealers than you do with drugstore concealers. There are of course always exceptions for example the um, the Maybelline Dream Touch Lumi like highlighting concealer that to me is a dead on dupe for the YSL Touche Clat and that kind of pink shade and it's much cheaper and the Maybelline Fit Me is again and it's a liquid but it does offer some nice coverage and it's not too drying it's really good still overall I prefer to spend more money and get you know more mileage out of these concealers Conversely, something I don't think is actually worth spending the money on is department store foundation. Um, and I should add a disclaimer, like that's in my opinion for my personal skin type and my personal skin concerns. Um, I have dry dehydrated amateur skin and I find for the most part, most brands don't address that skin type very well. The foundation that will work for you, you'll put it on and it won't look like you're wearing foundation. You won't be able to see it sitting on top of the skin. It'll just merge with your skin and look like your skin that's when you know you've got the right foundation. And for me, I have found that in these three foundations and they're all from the drugstore. If I want something nice and light coverage that just gives a really nice glow to my skin, I use the L'Oreal uh, True Match Lumi Cushion Foundation. Uh, even though this is drugstore, it is quite expensive. That's one thing I've always complained about is you don't get a lot of product for the money that you pay for it. It's like $20 and up. But I just, I love the finish so much, much and the fact that it's not heavy. And I also really love the L'Oreal Pro Glow. This is a more full coverage foundation that has that like kind of heavier feel to it, but it's fabulous. And if I need like more coverage, this is what I reach for. And then something that I really love and I've loved for um, probably a year or so is the Rimmel Match Perfection Foundation. This has again, kind of light, like it's got, it makes your skin radiant. It's just really nice and looks natural on the skin. It's kind of a medium coverage. So I've got like light, medium, and full coverage here. Okay, the second product that I think is definitely worth spending money on at the department store or like a store like Sephora and Ulta is eyeshadow. I'm just, I got so tired of spending $10 on drugstore quads or, you know, palettes that had no color payoff, no pigmentation, just really difficult to work with. I just, I've had it. Like, Department store eyeshadows tend to be much better formulated. They've got much better, like the perfect amount of pigmentation. They've got the perfect amount of color payoff. They've got a really nice formula. 
and a lot of the pro like powder products that I like at the department store it's because of the fact that they're finely milled and they have almost like a creamy texture to them and if they have like some sort of shine in them they tend to be a little bit more like a machine or a polish at the department store as opposed to just throwing cheap glitter and something to make it shiny. And the best thing about, you know, being at the department store is just the color range and the fact that they tend to have more wearable um, color combinations in their palettes and things. Uh, probably my favorite eyeshadows like at a department store price are MAC shadows. I just do for the most part there are some duds. I won't lie there and that kind of ticks me off when you spend a lot of money on something that's a dud. But for the most part like the shadows that I've really fallen in love with they tend to be a little bit more complex. So I love how creamy and complex um, MAC eyeshadows are. And I'm really starting to get into like these little eyeshadow pencils and I just what I love about the the department store is okay I hate how expensive they are like a cream pencil like this is around you know 33 35 dollars or something like that but they've just got color options that you don't see at the drugstore and the formulas are really great and they're just simple to work with and you can throw them in your bag this is like a twist up as opposed to a pencil that I have to sharpen um, this is a Bobbi Brown what is this long wear cream shadow stick so nice but of course, as always, there, ex there are exceptions. And in my opinion, some of the best at the drugstore, the L'Oreal La Palette Nude 1, or La yeah, La Palette Nude 1. I think this is a fabulous palette. It is on the pricey side, especially if you're buying it in Canada where I live. I mean, this can be upwards of $30, which to me becomes not quite worth it because you might as well go and get a Too Faced little palette for $36. But if you can find this for $20, I think, and I think in the States it's like $15, it's definitely worth it. I haven't tried the second one, but I love this one. Then one of the best palettes I've seen come out of the drugstore are these um, CoverGirl True Naked palettes. I think there's three in the collection, and this one is the Roses one, which is kind of like a dupe for the... Um, Urban Decay Naked 3. I prefer this one to the Urban Decay Naked 3 just because the formulas are, you know, like there's a couple of mattes, there's some um, just like satin finishes, and then there are some really nice high shine ones, but they don't have the glitter. Whereas a couple of the shades in the Naked palette, the Naked 3 palette, are just chunky glitter shades, and they've got like they're just not very wearable so I don't use I only use a couple of shades in that palette whereas in this one I can use all of them and the wet n wild like the original color icon trios that came out like what eight years ago or so these are the best and probably the best one is this walking on eggshells just because these colors are kind of all dupes for Mac shades but they're so cheap these are fabulous of course, like everybody, they changed the formula, and so now their new palettes aren't that good. Something that I definitely do not think, after a long time of searching and learning my lesson, I don't think department store mascaras are worth the price. That's not saying that there's not some beautiful mascaras at the department store. I'm just saying for something that you have to change and throw out every three to six months, like you can't pass it on to someone else. You can't get like, really, if you're using it every day, and especially if your person that likes to pump it, you should be probably throwing them out every three months, um, especially if you've got sensitive eyes, six months for sure. Drugstore mascaras have come so far, like they're just so much better than they were 10 years ago. To be honest with you, $36 versus $8. This is the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir. Not that I don't love this, but this smudges underneath my eyeballs. This one does not. The exception to this rule, especially for me, is tubing mascaras. The downside with tubing mascara is it's not volumizing enough for me. It doesn't give me that wow you know kapow type of lash so what I've started doing over the last three weeks is I've started layering my mascara so I'll put a mascara on that has the qualities that I like then I seal it with the tubing mascara and it's been working 
fabulously. I'm not getting, and it even helps the performance of the tubing mascara because it bonds with the mascara underneath and it doesn't flake. I was getting some flakes with this. Um, so it's worked really well and it allows me to save some money. So I buy kind of a slightly less expensive tubing mascara because I don't need it to be all volumizing. So this is the Clinique, uh, shit, what's this called? Lash Power. So you can kind of dial it up. Well, I leave it on the same I don't like gimmicky mascaras like that. So I buy this, this is about $25, and I'll just layer it over top of a less expensive drugstore one, and then I don't have to buy another $36 mascara because this will break my heart when I have to throw it out in three months from now. So there. So another product that I think isn't worth spending money on these days are eyebrow products. Uh, I know that eyebrow products are all the rage right now, but they can just get so ridiculously expensive. Like I have a really hard time. I think probably the most ridiculous thing in my opinion is spending $25 on a pencil for your eyebrows that disappears after a month. Like it's just, it adds up so much. And I think eyebrow products are probably the one area that has improved the most in the drugstore, although I may have just said foundations and mascaras are the ones that have improved the most. But no, really overall, I have to give it to eyebrow products because there was a time when you couldn't find eyebrow products in the drugstore. I mean, it was, well, there was a time when you couldn't find eyebrow products. You used an eyebrow pencil, like a eyeliner pencil, and that was it. Or you used an eyeshadow, like a powder. But they've just, like the fiber, you know, like pencils have come a long way and the products that deposit fiber and brow gels and everything. I just don't see the point in spending Anastasia dollars when the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer is around. Um, I love this pencil. It's got a nice little nib. It's pretty much identical. Oh, remember doing this? Um, identical to the Anastasia one, but I love the fact that it's got the nice little spoolie on it. I love this little Essence Make Me Brow um, tinted gel. It has fibers in it. This one is a nice dupe for the Benefit Gimme Brow, but at like a third of the price. And the latest product that I've been trying that I'm wearing today, and I love this stuff, like love, oh, making a mess of it, is the Maybelline Brow Precise Fiber Volumizer. And what I love about this is it's got a nice little flat head on it. Um, the color, I probably should have gone with um, more of a medium brown. This is a soft brown, so especially on camera, it looks a little red, but I just, uh, you know, you sit and you just fill it and it's got these fibers and this gel and it just poof, plumps up my eyebrows in a natural looking way because I have a really hard time drawing on my eyebrows. I just, you know, for 10 bucks, this is so good and I don't need to buy Anastasia Brow Pomade, even though I have a full bottle of it, jar of it in my drawer. Something that I think is totally worth it at the department store like to pay a little bit more money for is blush. I just find department store blushes tend to be more finely milled than drugstore blushes. They've got the right amount of pigmentation. Sometimes drugstore blushes can be too pigmented, which is not a good thing, especially if they turn out to be not very blendable. Like you need to be able to blend a blush out. I know it looks like I'm wearing a hideous amount of blush right now. It's funny that I'm talking about blush. It's hot in here, my cheeks are red. Um, but you need to be able to blend that out. And again, like foundation, it should come together with your skin and look like it's a part of your skin and look like you just kind of woke up looking like that. So my favorite department store blushes at the moment are, uh, let's just do these two. So this is the Benefit Rocketeur. I hate the packaging. I wish they would come up with some more sleek packaging. I like the smell, it's just the perfect shade. And the other thing that I love about department store blushes are they'll have some sheen in there, like some sort of like luminous quality to them. But again, it's not a crap ton of gold glitter, chunky glitter that's stuck in there. It's actually a really nice shine to your cheeks. So you get kind of like a highlighter mixed in with your blush, but you know, they just, it just kind of like glows, gives you that nice glow from within. I'm really loving this little Sephora brand micro smooth, um, baked blush in guava glow. And I've been wearing like this side is, is quite scary, maybe in the summertime, but again, see how it's got that polish to it. But this light side 
was perfect in the winter. I was using it as like a highlighting blush and like my OG Holy Grail, NARS is Deep Throat. I love this. Again, just the right amount of pigmentation. To me, this is like the peach version of the Rocketeur blush. Light, glowy, kind of like a highlighting blush. This is a peach version. This is more of the mauve pinky blush version. Next product that I think is worth the money at the department store is face powders. Uh, the first product I ever had, like the first department store makeup product that I had when I was, oh, I don't even know how old I was. I may have been like 12 or 13. My mom bought me some Clinique powder and it was like a loose powder. And I mean, it was ridiculous. It was like this big pot and I'd poof it on my face and I would look like a ghost. But I felt, you know, like a grown up and I felt sophisticated. And that was my entry into makeup was the Clinique loose powder. Face powders from the department store tend to be super finely milled. There's a subtle sheen to them. Um, they're just glowy and they don't look too cakey. They don't look too heavy and they don't make you look powdery, powdery and dry. This is obviously the iconic Hourglass Ambient Face powder in diffused light, which is the lightest shade. I use this underneath my eyes. You can use these as highlighters, but to me, they just kind of, they, they end up looking too powdery on me as a highlighter, but underneath my eyes, they just give a nice glow. I don't know why I'm patting this on underneath my eyes. But again, I mean, these are $46, which is uh, painful to pay for, but I've had this for quite a while. And because I have dry skin, I don't have an issue with like oils getting onto my powder products. And I'm doing really well with this. Like it's starting to go down. Like it was more domed when I got it, but there's still quite a bit of product in there. So worth it in my opinion. But of course we need an exception. And this is the NYX matte, but not flat foundation. This is like a powder foundation, but I use it as a finishing powder and it works a lot like the, um, uh, hourglass and that I just use it to set under my eyes. This gives a little bit more coverage, but there's a very, very subtle sheen in this. It's so finely milled. It actually feels creamy. Um, you can see there's quite a bit more coverage there than the, um, the hourglass, but it's just so good and it's under $10. So that's definitely the exception. The packaging sucks, but you know, what are you gonna do? Okay, something else that's just not worth it at the department store, in my opinion, are lip products, specifically lipstick and lip glosses. Like, again, I don't care what ingredients are in your lipstick, but for the most part, and I'm I'm gonna exclude like liquid, li liquid, liquid, liquid lipsticks and like matte lipsticks here, I'm excluding them. I'm just talking about your traditional bullet lipstick. I just find that um, all lipsticks disappear on your lips after, you know, like at the most, you're gonna get three hours. At the most, you'll get three hours out of a lipstick. So you're gonna have to constantly reapply your lipstick throughout the day anyway. Why spend $30, $40, $50 on a lipstick when you can get great lipsticks at the drugstore um, for around $7? I'm thinking specifically Maybelline. I love Essence lipsticks. They're three bucks. You can't go wrong. And to be honest with you, I used to have a nice little collection of MAC lipsticks going and I loved the smell. I loved the formula. I love how they felt on my lips, but they're the only lipstick I had that grew a bloom on them. Like I opened them up one day and they had like this haze on them and it's mildew, which is disgusting. So I don't need that. Sorry. And I'm certainly not going to spend $21 a piece for that. So I just, to me, drugstore lipsticks, drugstore lip liners, that's where it's at. Drugstore lip glosses. I have never found a department store lip gloss that wasn't like super sticky and just gross and just totally not worth the money. Whereas um, lip glosses like uh, Rimmel's lip glosses and and essence lip glosses again. I mean, especially if you're just putting them in the center of your lip to give some shine, why are you gonna spend $25 on that or $30? Just spend six. Okay. Lastly, for things that I think are worth it is um, a line of products that I'm just getting into really, and it's setting sprays. And the reason why I'm just getting into them is to me, um, I've been trying setting sprays from the drugstore because I thought I don't wanna spend $30 on a bottle of something that I'm just gonna spray on my face and like, you know, that's it. Just seemed like a lot of money. But I find a drugstore setting sprays tend to feel kind of like hairspray for the face. They just, they don't feel very nice on the face. 
but I've been trying some different ones um, from Sephora and the latest one I'm trying is the Rainforest of the Sea Marine Boosting Mist. Now this is said that it, it's supposed to, you know, be a face like reviver, makeup setting spray and kind of a priming mist. But really when you look at the instructions, it says to spray it on your face before you put your moisturizer on. So I think it's really only supposed to be there to kind of open your pores, like spray it on your face and then you put your moisturizer on. It'll help your moisturizer absorb, 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 absorb better. But I like spraying it on after I've put my makeup on. It's got such a nice smell. Mm. I do think they offer something to the skin and they're just really nice and soothing and some of them actually do set your makeup and they definitely take away that kind of powdery feel that you have sometimes after put like after you put all your products on um, they just lighten that make your skin more glowy great oh we're at the end people the last product that I think is definitely not worth spending your money on are those gosh darn limited edition special edition palettes that they bring out at the department store at Sephora especially at Christmas time and I know I've been there um, I paid $75 for this palette this is the NARS virtual domination cheek palette um, I got it two years ago I thought I think and I mean obviously I see the appeal a NARS blush is $36 each so you're getting you know one two three four blushes and a Laguna bronzer for $75 what a great bargain right yeah so what ends up happening is there's you know you'll find two shadows that you like in an eyeshadow palette or two blushes or one blush that you like and then the rest of the palette goes unused you'll use it for traveling you say well it's too big really and bulky as opposed to just taking your one favorite blush with you so you know I understand how we get swept up I mean we want the beautiful package and we want to feel special that we got it but I just feel that at the end of the day they're not worth it and to be honest I find a lot of the times especially with the eyeshadow palettes the quality of the, of the eyeshadows is different than in their regular line like they go to a different factory or something to make these mass produced kind of larger sets and it's just not worth the money um i was looking very closely at that hourglass um palette last christmas that you know that like the the marble one that was like 150 dollars or something ridiculous but i didn't do it because this taught me my lesson you know it just sits in the top drawer of my original beauty box looking pretty never getting used so don't waste your money on that so there you go words of wisdom from the old lady to you i hope i've helped you save some money or find some things that you know you can go and splurge and treat yourself on uh yeah there you go thanks so much for watching everyone and we'll see you next week